Hi, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction. Today I want to share with you the Christian fiction books that have won awards in this year. It's always interesting to see which ones they've picked and whether I or you uh, agree with them or not if you've read them. So I'm going to be looking at the Christie Awards which have just come out recently and the Carol Awards which came out earlier in the year. Both of those have been going for a while. I have a playlist of award-winning Christian fiction um, in separated into different genres so I will leave that in the description. That's from previous years uh, in the past but this is this year's books so let's have a look and see which one's won. I'm going to sort of morph them both together and go through them by uh, genres and categories. I'm not going to read out the whole descriptions but I'll put the list of the books in the description and there'll be a list of books on my blog with the full descriptions I've pasted on there. So Book of the Year, the Christie Awards gave their Book of the Year um, win to Within These Walls of Sorrow by Amanda Barrett and I don't, I have definitely haven't read this book, um, I'm not sure if I've heard much about it so that's really interesting. At the beginning of the description reads Zosia Lewandowska not sure I pronounced that at all correctly, um, knows the brutal realities of war all too well. Within weeks of Germany's invasion of her Polish homeland, she lost the man she loves. As ghetto walls rise and the occupiers tighten their grip on the city of Krakow, Zosia joins pharmacist Tadeusz Pan Pankiewicz and his staff in the heart of Krakow ghetto as they risk their lives to aid the Jewish people trapped by Nazi oppression. I'm definitely convinced I did not pronounce those names correctly, so I apologise for that. So it sounds like that's um, a World War II set in Poland. And then the Christie Awards have a, an award for the Amplify Award for Christian Fiction. And that went to The Star That Always Stays by Anna Rose Johnson. Growing up on Beaver Island, Grandpère told Norvia stories, stories about her ancestor Megizi, about Bibunke Onini, the winter maker, about the Crane clan and the reindeer clan. He sang her songs in the old language and her grandmothers taught her to make story quilts and maple candy. On the island, Norvia has, was proud of her <laughs> Ojibwe heritage. Things are different in the city. Here, Norvia's mother forces her to pretend she's not native at all, even to Mr. Ward, Mar's new husband, and to Vernon, Norvia's irritating new stepbrother. Yeah, again, sorry for the pronunciations of that. That one seems to be set in 1914. Another one that I've not heard of. So, yeah, again, interesting. So, then in contemporary romance... Tony Shiloh won the Christie Award for To Win a Prince, which is a book I have read, um, so I am familiar with this one. As a fashion aficionado and best friend of the Queen of the African Island country of Aloro Ile, Iris Blakely dreams of using her talent to start a business to help citizens in impoverished areas, but when she discovers that Econ Diallo will be her business consultant, the battle between her desires and reality begins. The Carol Award for Romance went to Turn To Me by Becky Wade. His promise will cost him far more than he imagined. Guilt has defined Luke Dempsey's life, but it was self-destructiveness that landed him in prison. While When his friend and fellow inmate lay dying shortly before Luke's release, the older man revealed he left a string of clues for his daughter, Finley, that will lead her to the treasure he's hidden. Worried that she won't be the only one pursuing the treasure, he gains Luke's promise to protect her until the end of her search. So that I haven't read that one, but I've heard of that one from several people who have read that one. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you have and whether you think it's worth an award. The Christie Award for the first novel went to Split Between The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs Kipp by Sarah Brunvold and... The Forgotten Life of Eva Gordon by Linda McKillop. So The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs Kipp 
is Aidan Kelly is talented, ambitious and ready for a more serious assignment than the fluff pieces she's been getting as a cub reporter for the Kansas City Star. In her eagerness, she pushes too hard, earning herself the menial task of writing an obituary for an unremarkable woman who's just entered hospice care. I've heard a lot about this book, so yeah, I am not surprised it's won an award. I haven't read it, but I have heard a lot about it. And The Forgotten Life of Eva Gordon. Eva wants to run away from her life, if only she could remember how. Failing memory has forced Eva Gordon to move in with her granddaughter, Breezy, but Eva hates the bustle of Boston. All she wants to do is move back to her quiet, cosy Cape Cod home and be left alone. And the Carol Award for debut novel went also to The Extraordinary Death of Mrs Kip by Sarah Brunsvold. The Christie's Award for General Fiction went to Where the Blue Sky Begins by Katie Powner. Sometimes the hardest road of all is the road home. When confident and handsome Eric Larson is sent to a rural Montana town to work in the local branch of his uncle's financial company, he's determined to exceed everyone's expectations, earn a promotion and be back in Seattle by the end of summer, yet nothing could prepare him for the lessons this small town has in store. So I think I remember seeing this one when it came out, but it's not one that I've read. The Carol Award for Contemporary Fiction, which I think is kind of similar, um, went to The Songs That Could Have Been by Amanda Wen. Two couples in love, two sets of impossible circumstances, one powerful god of grace. After a tailspin in her late teens, Lauren Anderson's life is finally back on track. Her battle with bulimia is under control, her career is taking off and she's surrounded by a loving family. Then a chance meeting with Carter Douglas, her first love and the man who broke her heart leads to old feelings returning with new strength and suddenly her well-balanced world is thrown off kilter. The Christie Award for Historical Fiction went to um, Within These Walls of Sorrow by Amanda Barrett, which I read out earlier on. This book won the Historical Fiction and then the Overall Book of the Year Award. And the Carol Award for this category, Historical, went to The Lost Melody by Joanna Davidson Politano. When concert pianist Vivian Mordant's father dies, he leaves to her the care of an adult ward she knew nothing about. The woman is supposedly a patient at Hurstwell Asylum. The woman's portrait is shockingly familiar to Vivian, so when the asylum claims she was never a patient there, Vivian is compelled to discover what happened to the figure she remembers from childhood dreams. And in the category of historical romance, the Carol Award went to Written on the Wind by Elizabeth Camden. He carries a dangerous secret, but can he survive long enough to expose it? Count Dmitry Sokolov has been charged with overseeing construction of the legendary Trans-Siberian Railway, but during his, this work, he witnesses an appalling crime, the truth of which threatens the Russian monarchy. In an effort to silence him, the Tsar has stripped Dmitri of his title, his lands and his freedom. But Dmitri has one asset the Tsar knows nothing about, his deep and abiding friendship with Natalia Blackstone. And the Christie Award for Historical Romance went to The Rose and the Thistle by Laura France, which actually was our book club pick for November so we picked that one before we knew that they had won an award so that was really cool. In 1715 Lady Blythe Headley's father is declared an enemy of the British crown because of his Jacobite sympathies forcing her to flee her home in northern England. Secreted to the tower of Wedderburn Castle in Scotland Lady Blythe awaits who will ultimately be crowned king but in a house with seven sons and numerous servants, her presence soon becomes known. The winner of the Christie's Mystery Suspense Thriller Award went to Cold Light of Day by Elizabeth Goddard. Police Chief Autumn Long is fighting to keep her job in the quiet Alaska town of Shadow Gap when an unexpected string of criminal activity leaves her with a wounded officer, unexplained murders and even an attack on her own father. Despite her mistrust of outsiders, she turns to Greer Brenner, a newcomer who seems to have the skills and training Autumn needs to face this threat to her community. And the Carol Award for the same category went to Fallout by Carrie Stewart Parks. 
Samantha Williams' carefully crafted life is about to be demolished as thoroughly as her art classroom when a careening SUV smashes into the school. In the dusty farming community of La Crosse, Washington, art teacher Samantha Williams manages to save her students when an SUV crashes into the school. Her car isn't so lucky. Oddly, her purse containing her driver's licence, credit cards and other identification is missing from the wreckage, forcing her to rely on the kindness of strangers. Never one to trust easily, Samantha is thrust into a world far different from her simple life of jigsaw puzzles, children's books and lectures at the library. And the Carol Award for Romantic Suspense went to Word of Honour by Hallie Bridgman. FBI Special Agent Linda Cutler is investigating an eco-terrorist organisation in the Alaskan wilderness when her partner is taken captive and murdered before her very eyes. The only person who can identify the key players, Linda, gets assigned to take part in a joint operation in Istanbul to take the organisation down. The Carol Award for the Best Novella went to While Mortals Sleep by Jania Trompt. And this is from the collection O oh Little Town. While World War II rages overseas, news reporter Eleanor Swears returns home to Maple View to, re- to face the repercussions of the death of her sister and her nightmare of Christmas's past. But the home front isn't as far from the war as she thought. A bomb has landed in the middle of the U.S., Now Eleanor and her family friend Gideon Brown may have to choose between the scoop of a lifetime and the love of a lifetime. And in their short form category, the Christie Award went to Always a Lady by Christiane Hunter and that's from the collection A Return to Hawthorne House. Despite the fact that her daughter is not cooperating, Caroline, Duchess of Riverton, is determined to ensure every one of her children marries someone they love as much as she loved their late father. William, the widowed Earl of Blackstone, is delighted to have his days of escorting daughters approaching an end. The last thing he expects is to find himself drawn to a woman who is, su- who is just starting on such a journey. Are they each too set in their ways to grasp this chance to have a second love? The Carol Award for a short novel went to Hunted in the Wilderness by Kelly Van Horn. Protecting the evidence means facing down assassins and an unforgiving wilderness. Framed for murder and corporate espionage, future aerotech company CEO Haley Whitcomb flees in her plane with a camera full of evidence that could clear her name until she's shot out of the sky. Now trapped in North Cascades National Park, her survival in the wilderness depends on park ranger Ezra Dalton, yet escaping the wild will mean nothing if they can't unrun their merciless hunters. And in speculative fiction, the Christie Award and the Carol Award both went to Dream of Kings by Sharon Hink. This is a book that I have read and I gave it five stars, um, nine out of ten. And it is a sort of retelling of the Joseph story from Genesis. The future never sleeps. In the glacial nation of Norgard, Jolan, the dream teller, serves every seeker, whether peasant or high lord. Though she loves using her gift, she struggles to navigate the corrupt and dangerous court and the jealousies of the Gildegard. When an old man's nightmare imparts a dire warning, Jolan realises her entire nation is in danger, but before she can sound the alarm, she is betrayed by the guilds and sold into slavery in a rival kingdom far to the south. So yeah, that one won both awards. So well done to her. And I think the final category is the young adult category. The Carol Award went to Wishtress by Nadine Brandes. She didn't ask to be the Wishtress. Mirth was born with the ability to turn her tears into wishes, but when a granted wish goes wrong, she is cursed. The next tear she sheds will kill her. She must travel to the well to break the curse before it claims her life and before the king's military find her. To survive the journey, Mirth must harden her heart to keep herself from crying even a single tear. I have that book on my shelf. I haven't read it yet, but I hope that I enjoy it as much as the award uh, people that gave out the awards. And the Christie Award for Young Adult went to This Dreamer by Sarah Watterson. Evie grows restless observing mortals from the safety of her desk in the control room, When a friend offers to smuggle her by portal into the human world, she jumps at the opportunity. 
Secretly, though, she also hopes to observe Adan, the human dreamer, only a glimpse she promises herself. But trouble awaits after her captivating adventure and delayed return. Not only did she take an unsanctioned trip to the ground, but the boy, the dreamer, is missing. Worse still, her director believes she is to blame. So I'm not entirely sure what that one is about, um, but it sounds intriguing. Okay, those are the books that have won awards in the Carols and the Christies. I hope I haven't missed any out. I don't think I have. Um, let me know in the comments if you've read any of those books, if you think any of those books are worth reading, and if you would read any of those books in the future. If you want to watch any more videos where I'm talking about award-winning books, you can watch this playlist over here. Okay, guys, I hope you're having a really great reading week and a great month and I'll see you again soon. Until then, God bless. Bye.